There you are. Hey, buddy. Are you going to play with us out here today? You are so cute. Oh, look at you. Look at you and your cute face. Hey, what a good boy. Hey guys, how's it going? Erin and I have quite the list of garden projects we're working on today. So here's a list. We want to get the plastic on the greenhouse secured. So right now I've got the sides down, but they're not secured. So if it gets really windy, they kind of blow around and it's getting pretty cold at night. Like last night, I think it was below 20 degrees. I think it said it was supposed to get to 17, but I never checked. Um, and then we have a few arborvitaes we want to get planted um, that have been just kind of chilling out by the greenhouse waiting for their chance to get in the ground. Um, we have a couple of pots to clean out, just a handful. I think and maybe have four or five with late summer and fall stuff. And then we want to get the gutters cleaned out and really not all the gutters need it, but in one specific spot, we've got two birch trees and everything collects in those gutters. So we'll get those cleaned out before we get more rain because we've got like three or four days of rain on the forecast. And then if we can get to it, we'd like to blow as many of the leaves as we can, like from the flower beds into the grass so that we can pick them up with the mower and kind of mulch them down a little bit. And then I can put them in my um, composting bin in the back of the barn. So that is the list. I don't know how much we're going to get accomplished today. It's um, kind of, I think it's like noon or so right now. We've been doing some work this morning and it's cold. So anyway, let me go find Aaron and we'll get started. What you doing up there? Whoa, careful, <laughs> careful. <laughs> okay, <laughs> see we've got some leaves right here. I'm gonna blow these out of the driveway into the grass to be picked up. Aaron took after my weeping willow tree right oh. here. <laughs> I just wanna point that out. <laughs> Are you proud of your work? Okay, here's the thing. In my defense, <laughs> when I mow the lawn and the branches are dangling down, they practically strangle me. Oh, I'm, they do not strangle you. Yeah, and they, That's they dramatic. They do, they get wrapped around my neck. <laughs> so I came and I cut them. And people, this is what a weeping willow should never look like ever. I oh, try. So sad, it was so magical. It was probably one of the funniest comments we saw in a while. Somebody, yeah. what, a couple months ago? Yeah. Or you, earlier this spring. He had uh, pruned a tree and he left like foot long stubs instead of cutting them back to the main branch. I wasn't which done. He wasn't done, I'll give him that. But I was just giving him some harassment some sass about it in the video and then somebody said that I shouldn't be so mean to my workers. <laughs> so, That's all I am around here yeah, is the help. Right. I saw you pruned. I did. Are you proud of yourself? I'm kind of proud of myself. Do you think you did a good job? I think so. Did you leave a bunch of stumps all over on the tree? No. Do you need to go get the pruning saw and finish up your job? No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go look at it, Aaron. It's like you have not learned anything but at all from I our think videos. I did a great job. I like these. I know. Those are looking snappy. Okay, so here's what we've got going. Here's our greenhouse. And this, you guys, we ordered from Farm Tech last fall. Was it last fall? Yeah. Okay. I'm, my timing's all off right now. It's 20 feet wide and 36 feet long, and it's the Gothic arch style. And then we had the front framed in so we could put the shakes on it so it looked kind of nice, you know, because we see it from this angle right here when we drive in, so it looks kind of like a nicer building and not all plastic. But I'll show you what we've got to do over here. So you can see the plastic right here is stretched down, but it's not attached. So I have to admit what I did here. So we've got our shade cloth attached by this tree twine right here. And I came in and put these eye screws in, but I put them above where the plastic needs to attach. And I just didn't realize it until now. So we need to remove all of these and put them down right here. So I went along the edge here and I untied all the strings. So we will remove all the eye screws and then we will um, put the plastic in which I'll show you what we use for that. So these right here are called stainless steel springs and you can see they're quite long. They come in eight foot sections and they just clamp right into these U channels right here. So the plastic will kind of go down. You can kind of get the picture here. And then the springs just go right in there and clamp that plastic in nice and tight. So aaron has got the tool for the eye screws. Check this out, you guys. It's one of these things that like forms to anything that you've got. So for example, like here's an ice screw here. Yeah, it just connects to that, warms to it. So that'll make our job a lot quicker. I did all of these by hand with my sister this spring, or actually it was like summer almost, when we put the shade cloth on. 
and it was hot and we did it all by hand it took forever and you guys might be wondering about the shade cloth whether or not we're gonna leave it for the winter and we are and the reason for that is at the garden center where I work, we've kept the shade cloth on to, uh, like all year, I don't say 24 seven, but all year long. And it actually helps save the greenhouse plastic and makes it last a lot longer. Like the plastic we have on our greenhouse down there, we're going on our 11th year using the same plastic. So I don't know if it's just, that's the magic formula is having that shade cloth on top of it just to kind of keep it from, you know, the scorching sun and keep, you know, a little bit of protection from extra snow or whatever, I don't know, but whatever we're doing down there is working, so that's what I'm gonna do here. Oh, so much faster. So here's an example of the U-channel with the spring already put in it. So this one runs horizontally three feet up from the ground there. And we kept that one all summer, of course. So there's a bunch of junk in there right now from all my plants. They're kind of butted right up against the edge of the greenhouse, but see that? It clamps it in there and holds it on nice and tight. <laughs> Look who's in there. <laughs> hey, Russell. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Here we go. They're pretty easy to pop in. Nice and tight. All right, we've got one side done and it looks really nice. Nice and tidy. The plastic is clamped down and then the shade cloth has been retied in the proper location. Yes, <laughs> one side to go. All right, we got the second side done. Huh, it feels good to have that chore done. So the next thing we're gonna do is try to get some arborvitas planted. You might remember last November we planted five arbs right behind the greenhouse, but I didn't have enough to finish the little hedge I wanted to do, so we're gonna plant five more back here. Let me show you. So we planted these five, of course, last year, and the poor things got so weighted down by snow that most of them have snapped back, so four of them have pretty well. This one's a little bit misshapen, but not terrible. I think it'll be just fine. And these are the next five that need to go up. So this is our neighbor's property here, and he keeps it very tidy, but we thought it would be really pretty to have a nice solid green hedge back here. Let me back up so you can see. See, just a nice solid hedge, and then our wood pile starts, which we have more wood coming to fill in that area there, but we are prepared for winter. Oh, good for the dirt? Yeah. Good for you, that was good thinking. So I think what we're gonna do first is get these spaced out. I think probably just by eye back here. Yeah. And then we'll have to move the gravel out of the way and cut the landscape fabric. I think there's landscape fabric back here. This whole area when we tore out the grass and got it ready for the greenhouse, we put landscape fabric under most all of it, I think. I can't remember exactly, so I'm not sure what we're gonna run into. <laughs> So I cleared out the space for the first arborvita, and I did run into landscape fabric in this spot here. So I brought my um, box cutter over and I'm just gonna make a X like this. Oh, oh and another piece underneath. And so then what I do is I just fold the flaps back, kind of like I probably have to make it a little bit bigger. Watch out, Russell. And that way Aaron can dig the hole. So in this situation, usually you want to dig the hole twice as wide as the pot. Um, and in this situation, because there's so much gravel, I think we're gonna just kind of make do and make the hole about the same size as the pot so I don't have to move the gravel so far out of the way. Um, but these are North Pole Arborvitas. They grow about three to five feet wide and about 10 to 15 feet tall so they're a really great narrow hedge So 
small compared to the other ones, but they'll catch up. It's looking really good. I'm just glad to get this project done before we get uh, more rain and possibly snow here pretty quick. The soil doesn't actually look half bad back here. No, it's- It's not like really compacted like most of our other areas. Yeah, it's pretty good. So we brought the cart out for excess soil so we didn't make a huge mess on top of our gravel back here because that's really hard to clean up. <laughs> Russell's watching you. Russell, you better watch out. Oh, check out this pipe. This is the old pipe that feeds the grass over here. Uh-huh. But we don't use it anymore. We rerouted. So it's a dead pipe now. Yes. So it doesn't matter if we break it. It doesn't matter if we break it. And the roots will break it. But Eventually. it won't matter because it's abandoned. So. Isn't that kind of nice? Yeah. <laughs> The gravel was a little thinner in this area, yeah, wasn't it, was. it? Awesome. Well, there you have it, guys. All five of them are in the ground. Now we have one more arborvita to plant. And that one is actually gonna be out here to replace one of the other ones we planted earlier this summer. Let's go take a look. I have some garlic coming up. I didn't think I was gonna see any because I got it planted so late. There's another one right here. And then it got cold really fast. Oh, I'm seeing them all over. There's one here, there's one over there. That's exciting. And the bed with the Italian garlic looks pretty much the same. No growth yet. Oh, sad. So we planted about 65 arborvitas along this fence line earlier this summer and it was really at the wrong time of year. It was 104 degrees the day we put them in the ground, which is kind of a dumb thing. I know better than doing to do that, but we just really needed to get them in the ground and get moving um, and give them a chance to acclimate. And they've actually done really well for the most part. Arborvitas in our area don't tend to love it because it gets so scorching hot and um, it's so, such a dry heat here. So um, I was actually expecting to lose more of them and I think we've only replaced two so far. This will be our third, but out of 65, I think that that is a really good ratio because you plant 65 of anything and you're bound to lose, you know, a couple. So check these out. They all look pretty good. This is the one we're replacing. It's actually half alive still, but it looks pretty bad. And then down the line there, pretty good. I'm really happy with them. All right, so Aaron's gonna pop this one out of the ground and we're just gonna pop a new one in. And it's gonna look sad because this one's a lot skinnier than the rest of them. Think you can just pull, pull it out? <laughs> oh, well it started to root out. That's, that's a good thing. Close. Uh, no, that's good. All right, would you go give me a a check here. Is it straight up and down? Yeah, really? Sweet. So that looks a whole lot better. It's a little bit smaller than the others, but height-wise it's really about the same. It just needs to broaden out a little bit. But it looks a heck of a lot better than this poor thing right here. So I'm gonna come back and water all the arborvitas in a little while, but while we still have a little bit of daylight left, I don't think we're gonna get to many of the leaves today. But I think we'll get the rest of the pots cleared out. I have a few containers that still have late summer and, and fall flowers in them, and they're not looking super great. So it's time to probably dump them. Erin's gonna get the lawn tractor with the trailer attached so we can do it quickly, hopefully. So this is the first container. I had basil in it that I just cut off at soil surface level. So there's still a bunch of roots in there. So we'll probably just load the whole thing up and take it up to the pile. Russell, your tail is huge. Hey buddy, I can get one side of it. Well, we're not, that's cool. So we got the roots out of that one and spread the rest of it in this raised bed right here. Okay, I've got two right here by the potting shed. So this would probably come out all in one big piece. This is a plain the blue salvia that it still looks kind of pretty, but the leaves don't look good at all. So that one needs to come out. So these are the last three I want to deal with today. The first one is this right here. Look at all the leaves though, <laughs> first, they're just everywhere. The locust tree that's right here just decided to drop everything all in a matter of about 24 hours. Um, so this one, it has a little bit of color, but the grass is looking pretty bad. 
So that one's gonna go. That looked really good though during the season. Yeah, it did. Is that summer combo 2017? Um, yes. Is that summer or, or fall? We'll find out and we'll put a picture of what Yeah. It yeah, it's a combo for next year and it was absolutely gorgeous. There's a Coral Bell, Super Junior Royal Velvet, the uh, Bidens, and then the Prince Tut. And then this is one that we planted on the 4th of July this year. And the Plain the Blue Salvia looks really pretty still, except for the, the leaves in the morning are just so sad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my pruners and I'm going to cut all of these flowers off so I can enjoy them inside. The very last one is this right here which is a halloween arrangement which i'm actually not going to dump um, or clean out i'm going to put it in the greenhouse because there's quite a few perennial plants in here like the hookahs there's three of those this carex is a zone seven and i'm going to try to see what i can do with it in the greenhouse and the kale will look pretty for a long time and so will the pansies so this is a light pot this is not a heavy pot people <laughs> these are so beautiful because they have such long stems uh oh, someone's calling me. I don't know who that is. They can leave a voicemail. Look at those. Aren't those so pretty? So I'm gonna go take them inside and put them in some water really quick and then later I will put them into some sort of arrangement. Okay, that'll work for now. Okay, so we've got a trailer full. We're gonna run and pick up the Arbavita that we left on the ground <laughs> and then get all this stuff put away. Got the bin cleaned out, now we need to go put these containers away and I'm gonna ride in this trailer to keep them from hitting one another. Are you satisfied with yourself? I like driving through the Weeping Willow. Oh, look at that sad tree. It kind of looks like a Dr. Seuss tree at this point. Is that glass half full thinking? I agree. It looks a lot worse than it did, but it <laughs> is more utilitarian at this point. Is that what we are shooting for? No, we're not. No. <laughs> You're being mean to the help. <laughs> to your workers. <laughs> You're the best worker I've ever had, Aaron. Oh, shut <laughs> We need to get another shelving unit. Yes, we do. In a bad way. So do you think you want to attack the gutters today? Think we got time? I don't have to start dinner until like five. I can at least get up there and just blow off. Okay, just adding to the hoard in here. I'll get a new shelving unit and put all these pots in the third one. That'll look really nice. All right, so Aaron's gonna get up on the roof and blow the gutters out in the problem areas. We didn't get the big black container with the Halloween arrangement moved, um, just because we're kind of like, trying to gauge the rest of our afternoon with how much light we have left. The sun is kind of going down. It gets dark so early now, which I kind of like, because it forces us to just stop and relax a little bit. But at the same time, you really have to rush through things to get projects done in the day. So. Here is this area without those containers. And as soon as he's done with the gutters, I'm gonna come through with the blower and clean off the sidewalks here. And this looks pretty for now. The plants look great. I just wanted to get these in protection before it got too cold. I don't know what this is. That is a winged it. weeder. I found it in the garage. Uh-huh. I'm gonna bring it up with me. You think I that'll think, help? I think it might help if there's a, a jam. I never use this tool as a rule, people. We don't cut weeds off at the surface. We pull them up by the roots with our hands. <laughs> well. So this is our problem spot for gutters. So all the way around this balcony area and then along this side of the house, kind of like to that beam, because you can see that huge birch tree and how it kind of just hovers over the side of the house. So it, there's not very many leaves left now. Most of them are either on the ground or in the gutters. And the same goes for this side, although this one doesn't get quite as many because this tree isn't that big yet and that's a birch as well there's a triple trunk right there and then a single right there
Hello. While Aaron's finishing that up, I'm gonna run out and water all the Arborvitae so that I know that they're all watered in and settled into their new spots. Um, and then I don't think we're gonna get much else done today because it's starting to get darker and it's dinner time. I'm getting ready to go in and start some tacos. How's it going? Ice. Ice? Yeah, check this out. There's so much up here. Did we clean them out last year? Oh, check this out. I can hear it. Wow. So we're probably not going to get to the lawn leaves, are we? No, I can. Today? <laughs> do that later. We can do that tomorrow. Okay, so before I start dinner, there's a couple more things that I have to do inside that I'll just show you real quick. I've got to, I'm not going to haul the wood all the way in, but I'm going to get it on the little cart and then Aaron can haul it in when he gets done um, because I think it's way too heavy. Checking my shoes really quick, I forgot before I go on the carpet. Oh, hey Russell, <laughs> were you having a good nap? Okay, so this is where we temporarily keep our wood, like our big piles back behind the barn over there. And then we haul it up here, which um, we are going to have a huge stack. So we're gonna have it from about that little pillar over to the pot on both sides. And hopefully, like at window level, um, here pretty quick so that we're not having to make a bunch of trips. So I'm just gonna fill up this trolley so it's ready to go, and then Aaron will wheel it in. You want out, Russell? You want out, buddy? Come on. You want out here? Nope, stay where it's warm. Smart. There we go, that's about enough for one night. <laughs> Our house isn't heated primarily by our wood stove, but we try. We try to keep it going because if we do, then the heater doesn't have to kick on. And I really like fires uh, at night and in the morning. It's just such a cozy feel and I love our fireplace. Let me show you. So it's actually a three-way fireplace. This is in the great room right here, which eventually I would love to reface this side, the stone and do something different right here. But it is absolutely gorgeous to have fires in here. And it's kind of funny because you see all these holes. When it gets hot enough, the holes start blowing heat out. Um, and then it sometimes will whistle and we have to take these out. See these right here? They're all around, like there's several. We have to <laughs> take these out and find which hole's whistling and plug it up. Sometimes it takes a while to figure out which one is doing it. And then if you move around to our kitchen, this is the other side. So there's a brick fascia, which I really like in here. And then you can see the fire from there. So this is the other chore I need to do is I'm gonna clean the glass. Erin makes fun of me because I clean that glass every single day. And I actually get great pleasure in cleaning it because I love to look through clean glass at the fire. And then if we move around to the left side, so this side where our fire starting material is, it looks really nice. This is where we keep our wood trolley. There's the third side right here. And I like the fascia of this one too. It's really pretty. And then this right here blows heat out as does these right here. So there you go. There's like a little mini fireplace inside our house tour. <laughs> We've never done a full on inside tour just because our house, when we moved in last year, we moved in from a really, really tiny place. And then we moved into this house that's a lot bigger and we don't have very much furniture in here even still because um, we've been so busy. Uh, this year I've actually probably maybe doubled our furniture that we have in there. I've focused a little bit more on it. Aaron would have the whole thing furnished already, but one of these days we'll give you guys a tour of what it looks like in there. Uh, we will probably for Christmas at least. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out today. We didn't get everything done on our list, but we got a lot of it done, so it feels really nice. Um, and productive. I love those kinds of days. So thanks for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye.